Hello, Leonardo Quevedo and I would like to show you results of our study on uncertainty and convergence metrics in geostatistical inversion. Geostatistical inversion algorithms are commonly used to integrate data from different sources and produce many equally plausible realizations. The ultimate goal of generating many realizations is to evaluate uncertainties based on produced sets of volumes. Accounting for uncertainty is a key factor for field development and various measures um, can be used for risk assessment, for volume or oil in place, estimated for all reservoir bodies or only for connected bodies or within a certain radius like a drainage area around wells. Therefore, one of the first questions while planning any geostatistical inversion is how many realizations need to be generated in order to reliably evaluate geological uncertainties. The first answer to this question coming to our mind is quite simple. Just generate as many as possible. But since we cannot generate infinite number of realizations due to project deadlines, available computational resources. Uh, the second question is raised immediately. Will it be enough to evaluate geological uncertainties? However, we can use a different approach and start from analyzing project objectives. So then the more useful way to state this question will be how many realizations are needed to achieve as requested level of uncertainty or acceptable level of accuracy for the selected criterion. It also means that depending, that depending on the selected criterion, the minimum number of realizations can change. Optimized number of realizations also depends on other factors, such as just statistical inversion algorithm, complexity of inversion parameters, geological settings, quality and availability of well information, and so on. Ideally, we would like to know the number of realizations to be generated before starting an inversion project. Unfortunately, in reality, the degrees of freedom affecting the answer are so many that it cannot be done in advance. But what we can do is to adjust the number during the project, meaning that after generating a few realizations, we can make predictions of how many more need to be calculated to achieve the required level of uncertainty. In this presentation, we will analyze different methods to obtain an estimate of the minimal number of realizations required to achieve a certain level of accuracy for Gaussian distributions. More traditional convergence graphs of cumulative mean and standard deviations. And the second approach, which is called uncertainty graphs here, uh, of bootstrapped and theoretical confidence limits to the mean and standard deviation. Uh, the methods are applied to the ranking results calculated for a set of realizations. They are reliable for normal distribution of ranked results. So checking for Gaussianity is important. Depending on the ranking criterion, the results may vary. There is no single answer. The answer depends on the question. The first uh, method is a simple convergence graph. It shows the evolution of sample mean and um, with, uh, for a certain criterion, for example, volume of pay or poor volume, as more and more realizations are added to the analysis. It is expected to see that the sample mean value um, of the function, um, as a function of the number of samples would asymptotically flatten into a constant value. A different asymptotic behavior may indicate that more realizations are required. The estimated standard error in this case gives an estimate for the accuracy of the mean. 
The calculation subsequently adds one by one more and more realizations to the analyzed set. Therefore, the ordering of uh, them determines the behavior of the curve. Here we have a curve for just uh, one um, version of uh, realization sorting. Sometimes, uh, to minimize the impact of ordering, the problem is solved by reshuffling the samples uh, many times and uh, presenting kind of averaged results. But it doesn't change the limitations of the method, like the fact that the best estimate is at the last point of the curve. We will also look at them on the examples later. Uh, the second one is based on bootstrapping and theoretical predictions. So we have two sets of curve. The first one, a thick green line at the middle, bootstrap mean, thin green error bands, corresponding bootstrap confidence intervals. Uh, bootstrapping is done um, by random sampling with re replacement. So the same sample can be used more than once. The second set of curves are theoretical estimates derived from a student's T distribution, dotted flat black line, the mean, dotted red lines, predicted standard error bars. The prediction can be extrapolated to a larger number of realizations. Bootstrapping, it's, uh, so uncertainty estimates based on uh, all the samples. And uh, in this approach, many random subsamples with replacement are extracted from the total set of samples and used to calculate estimators of any statistical variable. Bootstrap estimators and confidence bounds around the mean can be produced this way. This takes into account the complete data set and is insensitive to the order in which the data is added. But there is another limitation. Uh, due to the random character of sampling, the exact curves are not fixed. They change every time it's recalculated. The general behavior is usually preserved between different rows, but details can be different. For the specific case of a normal distribution, we can calculate an estimation of an interval in which a future criterion observation will fall with a certain confidence level, given the current realizations. These confidence limits are calculated uh, using the best available estimates for the simple mean and standard deviation according to the expression on the slide. This estimation is kind of equivalent to bootstrapping for a known distribution. The limits can be extrapolated assuming constant mean and standard deviation, what allows to make assumptions on how future realizations will impact the uncertainty. Dashed red lines can be also used to quantitatively estimate how many realizations are required to obtain the desired level of uncertainty. They are confidence limits around the mean are showing how uncertainty on the mean narrows as we add more realizations. For unknown uncertainty cutoffs, the required number of realizations can be simply picked from the graph. We will analyze the methods on the example case study of classic deposits from offshore West Africa. The geostatistical inversion algorithm used in this project is a combination of a Bayesian inference and the Markov chain Monte Carlo method. We've generated 100 realizations for this analysis. Each one of them is independent and equally plausible. Each realization contains a set of volumes, facies, all sands, wet sands, shales, elastic properties, and reservoir properties. As the reserv uh, reservoir properties here were co-simulated from facies and elastic properties. So we will explore the statistics and convergence properties of different objective criteria. The criteria are based on geological characteristics and calculated based on different volumes, facies and porosity. 
We haven't included any extra cutoffs uh, for properties used in calculations. Instead, we applied lateral and special limitations. So for example, here, we look at pore volume in oil sands within 300 meters around the target well. Uh, there is a map of the most probable realization defined according to this criterion. The analysis was done for different sets of realizations. We subsequently extended the list of them and present results for 10, 50, and 100 realizations. The predictions can be made for Gaussian distributions. So here you see histograms of calculated pore volume for 10, 50, and 100 realizations. When there is a small number of realizations, it can be hard to confirm a normal distribution. The more realizations added, the easier the visual check. Let's start with convergence graphs. It shows how the convergence vary for different sets from 10 to 50 to 100 realizations. It is expected to see the cumulative estimated values to plateau. Asymptotic flattening on a constant volume indicates that there are enough realizations to have a good estimate of the mean value and uncertainty. But to confirm a plateau, usually we need to generate extra realizations. It is an inefficient approach from the project management perspective. Convergence graphs are a popular method to analyze uncertainties, user simplicity. However, they should be used with care. It's a good way to evaluate an existing set of realizations, but doesn't have any prediction power. Like after generating 50, it is unclear what will happen with the graph. From 10 to 50, the graph went uh, slightly down. With the, will it go up, down, or stay flat when we go to uh, 100? So after having a hundred realization, we confirm that it actually stays flat, but we had to generate these extra realizations. Uh, one of the features of the convergence graph is that as more points we accumulate, the contribution of each subsequent realization to the convergence plot is progressively less relevant. Conclusions based on convergence graphs are easier to draw was a particular group of realizations and harder to extrapolate further. The next approach is uncertainty graphs showing values of the mean and its confidence limits based on the information contained for a given set of realizations, 10, 50, or 100. Theoretical bounds, dashed red lines, are extended beyond the measured data by two times. We expect that the theoretical curves will follow the bootstrapped green curves and bounding lines to narrow while increasing the number of realizations. While adding more and more realizations to the set, we see a consistent behavior of these graphs. The mean values from 150 fall within the confidence interval for the corresponding 50 and 10 realizations. So the predicted values are quite reliable. Confidence bounds, red lines, significantly tighten, for example, as we go from three to 10 realizations. And from this plot, we expect them to shrink further if we produce more, like 20 realizations. Uh, this estimation is confirmed with the real data as we incorporate more and more to the calculation. One more. Uh, so graph says that with 100 realizations, we expect uncertainty to decrease by 4.4% when we have just 50 in our set. This is confirmed by the uncertainty graph generated for 100 realizations so the difference, the real difference is 3.7%. Let's look at the second criterion. This one has a more complex geological constraint. Now it also considers connectivity between modeled all sand bodies. There is a map of the most probable realization for this criterion. 
the analysis was done for the same set of 10, 50, and 100 realizations, complex criteria are more likely to lead to a bimodal or other non-Gaussian distributions. The connectivity factor has a significant impact on the estimated values of the criterion, causing large variations between realizations and making it harder to predict uncertainty changes. The histogram for the selected criterion for 10 realizations looks very uniform and hard to distinguish from a non-Gaussian distribution. After the creation of more realizations, the distribution appears more like bell-shaped. Since theoretical predictions are reliable for Gaussian distributions, we notice that a mean value from 50 our realizations rarely falls within the confidence limits of the mean from 10 realizations, while the estimated mean from 100 stays within the confidence interval for 50 realizations graph. So these two have normal distributions, and this one has more like uniform distribution. In order to get an accurate estimation, green bootstrapped curves must uh, match theoretical red curves. Otherwise, it can be a sign of a non-Gaussian distribution. When the desired uncertainty level for the criterion is unquantified, we can estimate how much the uncertainty will decrease after generation of more realizations. In the ideal case, when the interpretation criterion has a risk assessment measure defined in the project objectives, then the number of realizations required to achieve this level of accuracy can be picked from the graph. The same approach can be applied to standard deviation values. As a question of how many realizations to generate, is actually a question, what is the minimum number of realizations to have a certain degree of confidence or to decrease the uncertainty by a given value? The answer hardly depends on the criterion. There is no single answer for all questions. It depends on how you define your uncertainty, what you measure. It depends on the fact that we must know expected distribution of the criterion. Currently, we work under the Gaussian PDF's assumption. Um, there are plans to extend it for non-Gaussian distributions too. Uh, we looked at two methods. The first one is convergence graph, which uh, simply shows the mean and cumulative standard deviation graphs uh, while increasing the number of realizations. It's quite convenient tool to analyze a particular group of realizations, but results cannot be extrapolated further. The second method is uncertainty graph, basically mean and confidence limits obtained by bootstrapping and theoretical extrapolations. It allows to estimate of um, how future realizations will improve the confidence level uh, with a uh, given knowledge of uh, current uh, mean and uh, variance values. Decision on the number of realization at early stages of the inversion run can be made with this approach. So based on a smaller number of already existing results, we can estimate how uncertainty will decrease, how it will change while we add more realizations. This is critical for project management and assigning resources during project work. Thank you for your attention.